ladies and gentlemen, behold the awesome, magnificent, majestic power of the sun. We've had a new major filament tear-off slash dance happen within the last 24 hours. If you will watch down here, you can see a impressive dance going on. But this video is about a solved mystery. Do you remember this video from February 3rd? which showed a bunch of orbital debris breaking up in the atmosphere over Puerto Rico. And we were wondering what it was, and at the time, nobody knew exactly for sure. Well, as it turns out, the big bird solar storm that I was talking about, because it looks like a bird is literally coming out of the sun, like a phoenix, I guess, that on the 29th hit late, and it was the culprit that not knocked out a batch of SpaceX satellites. SpaceX had just posted an update describing the current status of the satellites associated with Group 4 through 7 launch of February 3rd as a result of geomagnetic storm. On Thursday, February 3rd at 1.13 p.m. Eastern Time, Falcon 9 launched 49 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Falcon 9's second stage deployed the satellites into their intended orbit with a pedigree of approximately 210 kilometers above Earth. Each satellite achieved controlled flight. SpaceX deploys the satellites into these lower orbits so that they may very rare case. Any satellite that does not pass initial systems check, it will quickly be deorbited by the atmospheric drag while low deployment altitude requires more capable satellites at a considerable cost to us, it's the right thing to do to maintain a sustainable space environment. And unfortunately, the satellites deployed on Thursday were significantly impacted by a geomagnetic storm on Friday. These storms caused the atmosphere to warm and atmospheric density at our low de deployment altitudes to increase. In fact, onboard GPS suggests the escalation speed and severity of the storm caused the atmospheric drag to increase up to 50% higher than during previous launches. All right. And we're looking for another solar storm to possibly hit Earth on the 9th or the 10th. You have a coronal mass ejection that will hit Venus and then Earth. NASA analysts have modeled a CME that left the sun on February 6th. It's going to hit Venus and then Earth. You can see here Earth is the yellow, Venus is the green. And um, that's a pretty... Big pow. I mean, I don't think it's going to mess you up. You might change your mood, but it's not do me. The Venus impact February 9th will not cause a geomagnetic storm. It can't. Venus has no internally generated global magnetic field. Instead, the impact will erode a small amount of atmosphere on Venus's unprotected cloud tops. But the Earth impact on February 10th will play out differently. Our planet's magnetic field will intercept the coronal mass ejection, preventing it from reaching the atmosphere below. Reverberations from the impact could spark a G1-class geomagnetic storm with high-latitude auroras spilling out of the Arctic Circle. And this is from the February 6th long-duration solar flare from Sunspot AR2939. It was from this big bang pow that we've been covering pretty extensively since it happened. And so while we may be in a lull period for Earth weather in the United States of America, kind of boring a bit, until about the 14th-ish, and then definitely picking up speed on the 18th-ish, space weather has continued to exceed almost everyone's expectations. Everybody predicted that we would be in a very low solar cycle, 25, and the NASA and NOAA predictions were the red line, the blue line is what we're going through, and how strong will solar cycle 25 be? I don't know. I predicted it would be pretty dang strong, and so we will have to wait to find out life is like that. And I just mean that no super duper major massive storms will be hitting us in the face in the next 10 days. But you will still definitely be getting weather that could mess up your day if you're not properly prepared or the drivers on the road are not properly prepared around you. So you got some snow over the next 48 hours coming into the very northern parts of the USA and Canada. And then you'll be getting some rain in Florida. And so... Well, we got big major storms coming around the 18th to the 22nd, it does appear. 
This thing coming around the 22nd looks nasty. Is that 22nd? Yeah. Let's go ahead and let this thing play out so you can get an idea of what we're dealing with. Like I said, we don't have any major storms that, you know, I have to make 20 videos about anytime in the near future. But it does appear the pattern near the 20th or 18th and on will be kind of nasty. There's a chance you guys can get some Valentine's Day snow for the Northeast, though. You know, nothing super duper major. But everybody loves snow, right? Asterisk? I'm sure there are people out there who are like, No, man, I hate snow. That's fine. There's always somebody who hates something. Yeah, you can see that's the 22nd storm, which would be a major flood threat. And, like I said, we may have had our, our coldest shot of winter like a week ago. We'll have to wait and see. Mother Nature can always surprise us, but, you know, I'm not the only one saying that. There are other people now being like, uh, you know, because we got that giant, massive, major heat wave coming to the Pacific Northwest again. A sidebar. This is like the most dystopian Olympics ever. We definitely live in interesting times. When you got Canadians saying, I'm beginning to question if we have reached the end of winter now already. See, that's not just me, man. That's like when you got Canadians saying it, because you're going to get a pretty big warm up heat up for the West Coast, California, Oregon, Washington up into British Columbia, so, but I don't know, Mother Nature's weird, so stay tuned. This is a crazy look at a volcano lava pit filling. True story. That's very interesting, right? Culture Volcano. The February energy has been really weird. Also, the U.S. seized about $3.6 billion in Bitcoin stolen during a 2016 hack of the Bitfinex currency exchange. The largest financial seizure ever. The filling volcano was from the Niragonga in Africa. Volcano, it is erupting and having its lava pool fill, I think. But yeah, you got early spring. Everybody talking about early spring and the big torch coming. So you got in like the first week of February. I mean, it's day eight, but you know what I'm talking about. That's So we are definitely on high alert for volcano and earthquake action with all the gas giants of the planets on the same side. Um, and I've been talking about the weird area up through here. I mean, cold shots will still come, especially for people over here, I think. Bill Cairns, the next widespread significant weather event may not take place until the end of next week. Another extreme setup like last week with very cold Arctic air, trying to push out very warm air from the Gulf of Mexico. Another messy snow ice rainstorm likely. Like I said, that really will start to get going. Our next storm period will be about the 10 days from now. So, but like this would be warm, cold shot, would move, move over here. Right now, it doesn't have anything but the north of Texas getting pretty freezy. But as we speak, Los Angeles is under an excessive heat watch. Temperatures reaching 90 degrees on Thursday. Um, and this is the first instance of an excessive heat watch this early in the year since at least 2006. So it's not unheard of, but it is weird. Hey, have y'all heard about NFTs? And when I played World of Warcraft, NFT meant not even funkin' trying. Meaning like you weren't even freaking trying. NFT, it wasn't not funkin' trying. Chris Crepon letting snow various or real flood warnings were in place for southeast Mississippi, southeast Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle as they've been getting a decent amount of rain and moisture over the last few days. Yeah, the Beijing Winter Olympics are producing some incredible in images. I agree with Tom. Very like, I don't know, welcome to the future kind of shit, I guess. Let's check out the sun's backside. Shall we? A large magnetic region, the red thing, looks kind of like a slug. Heliosmology has detected a large magnetic region shown in red on the back of the sun. From its location, it is five to six days before it will become visible to us. There was nothing at this location a month ago, so it is a new region that is emerging. Solar flux is 123. You have four sunspots on the sun right now. Um, and you got a new one starting to grow, and then the ones that are coming five to six days from now. So the solar flux has been over 100 for quite a while now. My observations. Yeah, Andy. The filament action has been pretty dang impressive. You know, Brazil's been hit by some pretty dang nasty flooding. Here we look at the satellite images that show the damage done. Before, after, before, after, before, after. The Earth is like a McDLT. The hot side's hot, the cold side's cold. 
and then they bob around like a lava lamp. Extreme cold, even by Alaskan standards, remains in place over the state. And temperatures could plummet to below zero fifty on Tuesday. And it's weird during a pandemic. Astronomers have found the first known quadruple asteroid system, an asteroid with three moons. I don't know. I've been in my foxhole, do my best to bring you guys excellent information. It was found orbiting Electra in the asteroid belt and could be the first of many quadruple or more systems. Electra was Daredevil's girlfriend and then became Daredevil, but that's a whole nother thing. Anyway, that asteroid, lucky. I don't know. I, if, if you might be like me. I don't know. I guess if you're by yourself, then you're like, man, I wish I had company. But if you've been kind of locked up with other people during the whole pandemic, you might be like, man, I wish I had some time to myself. So I guess we're just all having to make the best do. But yeah, it's interesting. You got an asteroid with three moons. And I still think there's a lot of asteroids and moons that we don't know about. Kind of mystical, you know? You know, it's weird as Americans don't really agree on much these days, but everybody seems to dislike Mark Zuckerberg. Anyway, Facebook has been having a rough go of it lately. I'm just letting you know. These are definitely interesting and exciting times. And that is a very impressive filament, in my opinion. Um, And so, yeah, we got another solar storm coming. And you got the big... Pluto return of the USA on 2-22-20-22. That's a lot of twos, man. Um, yep. Yeah, Dr. Erica Palmario is like magnificent filament prominence eruption of the southeastern limb of the sun just captured by Suvi. Camera on board goes 16. Man, we need new solar cameras too. You can never have too many cool solar cameras, I wouldn't think. And stereo was supposed to be front and back camera. Then one of them broke, so it's not. It's like having a stereo with one speaker. It's not true stereo, you know what I'm saying? Um. Okay, I'm sorry I'm in a weird mood. It's just the energy's been so freaking weird. And we're in the middle of the damn dark winter 2022. But hey, we're one day closer to spring, and that is excellent. Hey, I'm so incredibly grateful that y'all are so incredibly good to me. I think every day, I mean, you guys were great to me in January. Super great to me. And then like every day this month so far, someone has sent in a contribution. Although no one sent in a contribution today. I will be, you know, just super do. I'm just, you guys are so great. Only got $1,162 left to raise for February. If you'd like to contribute to donate and keep that streak up and running. Now we'll make do as we always do. But I'd like to say thank you, thank you, thank you again to Marsh Stars, Space River News, Greg, Pookie, Andrea, Arnica, Megan, Wizard of Oz, Texas Angel, Bruce, Patricia, Max, KJ, Ann, Brian, Marlita, Dan, Lightsoul, Arnica. Wait, I was wrong. A con contribution was made today. Glenda, thank you, Arnica. Thank you, Glenda. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Alexis. You guys are amazing and cool. I, too, am tired of the dark winter. But let's hang in there. It has been my prediction this spring and summer may be pretty cool. So let's find out together, shall we? Stay cool. Have a great night. I'm a little under the weather. So if you got a little extra pair for me, that would be cool. Okay. Stay cool. God bless everyone.